In astrophysics, we have this term called metallicity. Now, what I want to do is have a look at what that is, how we calculate it, and why it's particularly useful to know what an object's metallicity actually is. So let's use stars as an example. There's a variety of different properties we can actually measure. So we can measure the temperature, the mass, the radius, even the shape, and also the metallicity. And we're gonna have a look at what that means for the star and anything else that we can learn from that by learning its metallicity. So in astrophysics, when we talk about metals and metallicity, it means any element that's present in the object that's actually heavier than hydrogen or helium. So it's not like a, a normal metal you might be more familiar with. A metal is just something that is heavier than hydrogen or helium, or an element that is actually heavier than that, which actually accounts for most other things although hydrogen and helium are actually the, the most abundant elements in the universe. So nearly all matter in the universe is hydrogen or helium, and then anything else we would consider to be a metal. And when we look at the metallicity, that's going to be like the ratio, the fraction of the object that is not hydrogen or helium. So these heavier elements that again are not the hydrogen, not the helium, these are created in the cores of stars, and supernovas, and this is you've got the fusion happening in the core, which is fusing those lighter elements into the heavier elements. And then during the supernova explosions, they're energetic enough that you get these heavier elements being produced. So this is where they're actually formed. They don't just exist in the universe. There's a process that goes through that is going to actually generate those. And that is important with regards to the universe and its evolution because it means that the very first stars that formed there wasn't those heavier elements around at the time so those are going to have a lower metallicity because it would have lower metals in them they will predominantly have been hydrogen maybe some helium and then as they evolve go through their cycle they end their lives the next generation of stars is formed they would be higher metallicity. So low metallicity stars are going to, have, going to have formed earlier on in the universe. If they're still around now, it's likely that they are quite old stars. So, as we mentioned, these low metal stars, they're normally associated with the early universe. They will be very old stars, so these could be smaller stars that actually take a very long time to go through their normal evolutionary cycle. So for example, like red dwarf stars, some of those actually can exist longer than the universe has currently been around, so they will still be around now. So we have some of these very first stars, and that normally means that they formed at that point. So you can also put them into a couple of populations as well. So the low metallicity stars we might refer to as population two. These have low metals in them. They will go through their evolutionary cycle, and if it's a solar or sun-like star, it would have a planetary nebula, a white dwarf, and it would lose its outer layers. And then from that remnants left behind, you would get your next generation of stars forming, and that would naturally have a higher content of metals in them, because they were produced from the first generation of stars. So as they go through these cycles, the next lots, the population two would be a higher metallicity star. So they have a higher content of metals in them as they go through these cycles. Now there's a few ways you can actually express it or calculate it or show it really so that you can have the mass fraction, you can have the chemical abundance ratios or the photometric colours which will have a quick look at how you do that. So the mass fraction is pretty much a fraction of the mass in the star and it's given by this really simple equation at the top so the mass fraction of hydrogen plus the mass fraction of helium, plus the fraction of any of the other remaining elements, which would be your metals, would equal one. So to give you an example of that, this is what it is for the sun. So at the surface of the sun, the mass fraction is about, or just under 74% of it is hydrogen, just under 25% is helium, and then just over 1% is the remaining metals. So it's only a small content of metals because it is still predominantly hydrogen and most stars are still going to be predominantly hydrogen and you get more of these producers that go along. And also, a lot of the metallicity in stars is compared to the sun as well. So if we have this as a standard and we can then compare 
you know, is it low metallicity, high metallicity, when we look at another star. And the other one is chemical abundance ratios. Now we normally actually use iron because it's really easy to measure and its abundance will increase linearly with time so it can be a good indicator of evolution and things like that. But what you do there is you're splitting the light out from the star. So we would essentially look at the spectrum. And if you have a look at the spectrum, there are going to be dark lines in it. And these are absorption lines and we're looking at the absorption features for iron. Again, they're easy to measure and they would increase with time. So they would kind of absorb at a specific frequency related to iron and we would use that. So we would then look at kind of the, the, the iron to hydrogen ratio. And the equation there is given at the top if you want to actually measure a value for that. And the two things we, we need to know is the number of iron atoms per unit volume and the number of hydrogen atoms per unit volume. And again, you've got that for the star. We would then have it for the sun. So again, we're going to use the sun as a kind of standard or starting point. And then we're going to get some values for the star, which would be the, the iron hydrogen ratio. And as an example here, if we got a value of one, because it's the um, log base 10, that means that the star has a metallicity that's 10 times that of the sun. And if it's a minus one, then it's actually one tenth the metallicity of the sun. So we can use this to give us an idea of the metal content of a star in comparison to the sun. And then there is the photometric colours, which we can use to also get an idea on the metallicity as well. So these photometric colours or filters, you have here the Johnson photometric filter system. So you've got U, B and V. Now the U would be the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. B is kind of around the blue part of the spectrum and V is more centred on the visible. Um, and these block out all of the wavelengths of light apart from the one they're centred on. And they're quite broad filters. So again, if you use like a, the ultraviolet filter, it's mostly going to let through ultraviolet light and nothing else. So we can actually get a an intensity value for that part of the spectrum. We can get one for kind of the blue part of the spectrum. And what we can do is actually subtract them. So we can subtract the B filter from the U filter, and that can reveal an ultraviolet excess or not. Now, what does that actually tell us? Well, heavier elements in the star absorb ultraviolet radiation. So if you've got heavier elements there and they're absorbing ultraviolet radiation, an excess in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum would suggest that it is a lower metallicity, but it doesn't have those heavier elements there to absorb it before it gets to us. So why is it important to know metallicity then in a star? Well, one of them is there's a correlation to the metal content and the star likely having planets and gas giants. So if it's a higher metallicity star, it's more likely to have planets and gas giants. So if we're looking for planets and life, then it seems plausible to focus our attention on the higher metallicity stars than the ones that have low metal content because they're unlikely to have planets in comparison to the other population. So two stars of the same age and mass, the lower metallicity one would actually appear bluer than one with a higher metal content, which would appear a bit redder. And then the other one, as we mentioned before, to do with this ultraviolet radiation. So a low metallicity star is likely to emit more ultraviolet radiation because it's absorbing or not absorbing from the heavier elements. So you get more ultraviolet radiation being emitted. And that has implications for things like planet habitability. So if you've got more ultraviolet radiation being emitted and making it to a planet, that's not necessarily going to be favourable for making it habitable. So that's another thing to consider as well. Thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.